Hello, today I will discuss about superficial circular canal dehiscence. It is a condition in which the temporal bone overlying the superior semicircular canal is dehiscent or thin. It is a rare condition. It is also called labyrinthine fistula. So what is the pathogenesis behind? Actually there is a defect ossification of the otic capsule. And for this there is a absent temporal bone overlying the superior semicircular canal or it is so much thinned that it becomes vulnerable to future trauma like injury. Now what is the clinical feature that patient presents with us? Although it may be congenital but patient may present the same symptoms later in life like teenagers. Some patients present with vestibular symptoms only, some patients present with both vestibular and auditory symptoms. Again some patients very rarely present with auditory symptoms only. So what are the symptoms? Patient uh, develops vertigo on exposure to loud noise. This is called tuliophilomenon. Patient experiences vertigo on uh, change of middle ear pressure or there is increased in intracranial pressure. This can happen in parcel bone maneuver and straining, jogging, etc. Patient experiences autophony in which the patient hears his own voice or own respiration, joint movement, heel hitting the ground, etc. Patient may complain of chronic disequilibrium. And another symptom patient can present with oscillopsia. What is oscillopsia? Patient cannot stabilize the image seen by his eyes, especially when he is on movement. All the symptoms that uh, vertigo is induced by exposure to loud noise or due to a change in middle ear pressure or increase in intracranial pressure are called uh, third window symptoms because superior semicircular canal when it becomes dehiscent there is creation of a, a third window in excess of oval window and round window. So the symptoms are called third window symptoms. On tragal pressure or pneumatic otoscopy, we will see that patient is developing vertigo. On valsalva maneuver, patient will develop vertigo. On tuning for test, there will be conductive hearing loss. Why conductive hearing loss occurs here? Because the sound energy, most of the sound energy is lost to the third window of supersensor blood canal dehiscence. So that is conductive hearing loss. Now if we come to the investigations that we can do, we can do pure tonodiometry. In pure tonodiometry we will find conductive hearing loss and we can do vestibular evoked myogenic potential testing that is VEMP testing. In this testing we will see that there is a increased sensitivity with decreased threshold level and high amplitude. Another test is the imaging modality CT scan, preferably 0.5 millimeter cut. So how to diagnose suppress and circular canal dehiscence? We can diagnose by three things, the triad of history, the VEMP testing and the CT scan. Now if we come to the treatment of this disease, first number one, we have to educate the patient. If we can educate the patient about his illness and ask him to avoid the trigger factors, it will be enough for many patients. Number two, ventilation tube insertion may be beneficial because ventilation tube prevents middle ear pressure change and middle ear pressure change is one of the triggering factors of this disease. And the third one is surgery. Surgery is curative. In surgery, the resurfacing of the dehiscence is done by bone cartilage or fascia. There are two approaches, transmastoid approach and uh, transcranial approach or medial cranial pressure approach actually. And number four, post-operative vestibular physiotherapy may be needed. Thanks for watching. Goodbye for today.